Okay, so I've been editing and looking into stuff. <sighs> this one here, I'm not sure where do I start to share, but I was looking at one thing here, and it was talking about uh, the ten, 10 tribes. So I'll make this one next for you. The other ones are still buffering. I hope to get them downloaded. So, what is the obsession with the ancient Egypt by a priesthood seeking the reptile? Judaism holds the obsession with Egypt still over 3,000 years after their time in Middle Egypt, especially, specifically the Nile Delta, after Abraham forced his way into a nation with the Ark as a weapon powerful enough to prevent Egypt and her allies from removing them. We also have an exodus under Moses not dissimilar to the fabricated Babylonian captivity and a holocaust under Hitler as the last memory to be held by those who offer up their life to the creed and thus manipulated into the mindset of continually escaping from bondage as decreed by the rabbis. Never do they contemplate that the actual bondage they suffer to be yoke of the rabbis themselves and the priest's craft they represent. The escape from Egypt is perhaps the program remembered from which the rabbis are able to control all heroism within the Jewish soul enabling the upkeep and obsession with all things Egypt. Yet the Jews remember only the Exodus when in fact, when it is a fact today that they are moving always to take the Jews back to a platform that demands they offer ritual behavior afforded, by the, afforded to the captivity in Egypt. This could be described as a form of generational Stockholm Syndrome, which the Jewish religion has failed to unfetter itself as the case also for those who choose to follow the rabbis and constant scriptural fabrications to suit their present fabrications. They relive the story of Exodus every year. They put it into Meza on every door in the home. They put it on the teraflon. They wear first thing in the morning. They say it in the Shema, the most important prayer. And they will not eat a meal without mentioning the leaving of Egypt. Why? Do we have a case of inner circle doctrine constructing an outpouring of deception forming the inner circle theologically for the flock? Meaning the inner, cir inner core remembrance of the success of Abraham military that pans down to the faithful as a form of bondage, not under Abraham himself, but in the same manner priests sort of achieves today by twisting the victim into a perpetrator to prevent any and all debate of the facts such as the deception that allows priesthood to live free over people in fear-based servitude to false jailer, never questioning the narrative which would lead to the excommunication and end to the money train, keeping all those trapped in the deception under the false theology of the time spent in Middle Egypt as unquestioning initiates that the remembrance of the exodus from Egyptian captivity being the outer portico of theology to keep the faithful under the spell of fear, considering their place within the global populations. Hmm, intrigued. Let's do a triple twist double somersault and dive in. Egypt. Napoleon chose to invade Egypt instead of, as requested, that he invade England in 1798. This decision was made after the Italian campaign. Napoleon is quoted as stating that he wanted to follow Alexander the Great and has understood that all great works begin in Egypt. While in Egypt, Lord Nelson destroyed the Bonaparte's navy in a light battle, the flagship holding all the gunpowder being blown up with what was described as the loudest noise made by man. After the battle with the Malkins, Napoleon's main aim was to set loose 155 artists, architects, bot botanists and engineers to draw and document Egypt. Nelson assured such in the destruction of his navy, cutting off Napoleon, leaving him stranded. In 1801 they returned to France with all the data collected and artifacts drawn and catalogued, including mummies. This started a great obsession in Europe and all matters concerning Egypt as the secret societies energised in human knowledge to the masses, leaving them begging for more 
If you want to fill in your secret society with the Christian flock, you have to present yourself as an essential master in all things hidden. The idea for what became the Statue of Liberty in the United States was originally to be a statue given to Egypt as a huge edifice to stand at the mouth of the Suez Canal to mark its completion, but Egypt was bankrupt and therefore could not take up the accolade. Huh? Freemasonry looked then to America. The last hieroglyphs to be carved in Egypt are found at the Temple of Flea in 394 AD. From this point, Egyptian hieroglyphs become a dead language. So 394 AD, it has not been used since. Interesting. During the 1800s, Egypt gave away three obelisks obelisk, from the Greek needle in Arabic. The first in 1832 from the temple at Luxor was given to France and the second needle at the entrance to the temple was cracked. Ah, oh, there was a second needle at the entrance, but it was cracked. What cracked it? Two others would come from Alexandra. One was already fallen, said to be the result of an earthquake in the 13th century. This fall of this would go to London in 1877, towered in a casket. During a storm, six men from the steamer towing the obelisk would die, rescuing the men stationed on the casket itself. After rescuing those on the casket, they unshackled the obelisk and let it float away with the intention of sinking the payload after the storm. This failed because they could not locate it after the storm. It was found and claimed as salvaged by others and was sold back to Britain for five thousand pound oh, i didn't know that well wow. it was finally erected on the embankment of the front in front of the adelphi house and shell mix house and exactly as has transcribed in europe after the first of this was taken to egypt from egypt england like europe went crazy for all things egypt the secret societies once again cemented it, the narrative to gain interest in all things hidden to raise their own profile amongst the christian public let us not forget the fact Napoleon was busy demolishing Christian monarchies, which were to be replaced by the almighty masters of secrets, the secret societies. Vanderbilt financed the removal of the Cleopatra's needles from Heliopolis, the city of the sun, to New York. And contrary to popular was given to the city of New York, it was not as perceived by America's gift to America is positioned in Central Park and was celebrated in a ceremony attended by 5,000 Freemasons. If you take note in around the Bronx area of New York, you'll find a cemetery filled with expensive crypts for a wealthy, for the wealthy who have copied many Egyptian temples. Though not to scales, families such as Woolworth, Fox, Cinemelo, America become obsessed with Egypt, so do the kings of commerce who claim their ancestry in the architect of death, and once again the secret societies would land themselves as the hoarders, holders of many secrets to raise their standing in America against the church theology. With all that said, we must not forget the fact that the place for the largest collection of Egypt of this is Rome. She has 13 needles. Wow. From this reality we must consider reality we must consider which houses are behind the secret societies. Within each nation or city that the obelisks were sent, with the experience of a plethora of consumables manufactured with the sole purpose for embedding the country script, country script into Christian to excite the populations to all things Egypt. If nothing else, we can see that on the ether, a spiritual mist flowed these e artifacts. A spiritual mist followed these artifacts into nations, and though mass production of Egyptian dress products that the spirit would spread to the common people and embed itself into the culture. A dual theology was birthed into the nation, which history proves well. Don't stand on my computer, cat. Well, has been, sorry, I just have about to have my cat stand on. Um, has been the means to procure division that the unseen hands have manipulated to their advantage to the removal of the foundation of the culture and the race for the Western masses. The confusion achieved. The same have opened the floodgates to foreign cultures with the natives unable to come together, having lost all points of reference as to what who they are and what they are not. Chemoy. Candy, come on, over here. In this book, The History of Herodotus, 1862, page 20, Joel Rolleston, M.A. wrote, of Egypt, there is no appearance in the name Egypt on the ancient monuments where the country is called Chemai, 
represented in hieroglyphs by the tail of a crocodile. Chemai, the black land, the land of Ham or Kenai, the Egyptian god Pan or generative principle of the nature, is said by Plutarch to be so called from the blackness of the soil. Kenny, sorry for saying this wrong, I apologize, is singularly like the Greek. Ham, the Hebrew name of patriarch, symbolizes also soot, and like the Arabic ham, hand, hot, and the Hebrew horn, signifying brown or black, as in Genesis 10, 20, 30, XX, that's 10, so 30, I don't know, sorry, it's all burned up. Egyptus was in old times the name of the Nile. Okay, so that was the name of the Nile, there you go. So the Nile, okay, Egyptus was in old times the name of the Nile, which was called by Homer and Odysseus, and Strabo says the same with the opinion of Neotros, 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 sorry for saying these wrong. The original and the oldest gods of Chimi are Tuti, Toth, the first god and honoured until 30 BC when the dynasties ended. Arnim, Horus, Ra, replaced with after the second dynasty, seen only as a patron of the pharaohs by the time of the fifth dynasty. Hathor, Anubis, Anubis would go on to be replaced with Osiris and Isis would take over many roles of Hathor. As a plethron crossed over to Greece, many attributes afforded to Ra were given to Zeus as Toth became would become Hermes. In Rome, Zeus would become Jupiter and Toth would become Mercury. Solbeck, the lord of the waters, the crocodile. The cult of Solbeck first appeared on a ceiling from the reign of King Nama, the first king of the first dynasty. The ceiling shows crocodiles facing a distinctly sharp shine, shrine that later became the symbol for the city of Shedet, modern day Phanem. Fae, um, Fayum. In the Old Kingdom, Sobek was, also, was established as one of the significant gods of Egyptian religion and was frequently mentioned in the funerary of the Pyramid texts. Despite the occasional literary reference to Sobek, his prominence at the time was focused on his cult center at Shedet. At the end of the Old Kingdom, Sobek appeared to, as a local prominent god at Sumu in the Theban province. His cult had been present in Sumeru since the day, since the Heracoplanon period, when the ninth and tenth dynasties ruled Egypt from the Delta or the Middle Kingdom, the place of the residence of the Hebrew tribes. In essence, Sobek was promoted to the Nile, prominent in the Nile Delta. The very area our followers of Abraham would inhabit in the future. The period came to an end when the Theban kings of the dynasty XI took control of the Upper and Lower Egypt, beginning what is known as Middle Kingdom. The cult of Sobek at Sumeru became the second most prominent after that Shedet, especially during the reign of Aramen, Aramenhat II. Thus, Egyptian power had shifted from the Delta to the Upper and Lower Egypt, leaving the Delta vacant of the royal courts. Now, I know I'm saying these names wrong, I do apologise, and I have to read slower. Um, yes, I'm dyslexic and have some issues reading, and sometimes I, words, are, names I don't say often, I have to read a bit slower, so I don't mix them up. So, Beck's prominence was fixed in the region of Montenhoek to the first king of the Middle Kingdom, when Sobek mad, uh, was merged with the Sangon Re, Sumbek Re names first appeared at the entrance of the Theban tomb of Danga, an official during Montop II's reign. Even the coffin texts, the funerary texts used primarily during the Middle Kingdom, address Sobek as he who rises in the east and sets in the west. Here we can see the crocodile god merging with the sun god. The theology the priesthood used to cement this merge came in fact. The crocodile was said to be fireproof and thus indestructible by fire, as such must be of or equal to the sun. Sobek thus become 
a creator god being raised from the level of local god of inundation and fertility, thus merging also conjoined two priesthoods to the top of the Egyptian religion, those of Re and Sobek. So the image relief of the god Sobek from Kom Umtum Temple. And I am saying these wrong, I apologize. So Sobek Re, 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 Re would undergo another shape shift at Shedet. The new administrative capital of the 12th dynasty, Arunet II, began to invoke an earlier dynasty. This would merge Sobek and Horus. From this marriage, Horus and Shedet would be shown as a crocodile on a seal from the reign of, I can't even say that, sorry, of the second dynasty. Aramat II was the first to see this merge of Sobek and Horus of Shedet as the perfect synchronism to affirm the king's divinity, but it was Aramet III who brought the role of Sobek of Shedet Horus residing in Shedet to the highest significance. Sobek Horus of Shedet became associated with the epithets like Lord of the White Crown, he who resides in the Great Place Palace and Lord of the Great Palace. Of all these epithets were related to the king rather than associated with any god. Sobek would rise from a local deity with limited significance to a creator god as Sobek Re and kingship divinity of Sobek Horus. By late Middle Kingdom, Sobek became known as Sobek of Shedet Re Horus, the powerful god. His cult spread to 52 towns across Egypt. The kings of the 13th dynasty moved to priesthood Sobek's name within their own, as seen on the common royal name of Sobek and Hot. The second intermediate period saw the end of Sobek's fame. His cult with several towns would remain, but he was no longer one of the state gods. Sobek's importance to divine kingships would resume in the new kingdom. Temple for him and Horus were built within the same precinct at Kombombo. Apinop III sponsored Sobek's cult at Gabriel el Selsa, as well as Darashniha. Arabat, where he established a divine crocodile breeding center. Okay, that's weird. Before the deluge, okay, the ancient races, before the deluge, which is today an event accepted as the results of the melt of a 1300-year 13, ice age, a theory negating the idea of a water firmament over the atmosphere of the Maritime Empire known as Atlantis would be destroyed. The Swedian culture flourished in central Russia as the ice, ice expanded, which forced to move either southward into the lands, move ever southward into the lands, sorry, of what would appear to be lesser cultured peoples. If we go back further to before the mini ice age known as the Younger Dryas events, the stories of the hybrid race who would carry out evil things amongst men corrupting the earth and many of her inhabitants. Before the Swedian came, the Denisovians and the Neanderthals, the Swedians, are thus suggested to be a hybrid race between the Watchers, the Gorian, and the Neanderthal race, is said to have formed a hierarchical system of the North and Western Hemisphere civilizations, thrusting it upon the Homo sapiens, that the bloodlines thereof are the offsprings of the immortal gods of Egypt, and through the Greeks and onto the Romans. The Swedians held many attributes afforded to the Nephilim as men of renown, and thus seen later as diluted expression of this hybrid race. We have always remained, but have always remained, the overlords of the races today. The Greeks wrote copiously of the Scythians being the foundation of civilization who, will, who could well be another name for the Swedians. According to current genetic data achieved by Meyer and his Max Mayer and his Max Palak colleagues successfully extracted DNA from all four Denisovian fossils and determined that the specimens came from different individuals based on accumulated genetic, genetic differences among them. Two of the individuals lived roughly 65,000 years before others, meaning the Denisovians' lineages was around for quite some time. Denisovians, Neanderthals, and modern humans descend from the same populations of ancestors who most likely lived between 550,000 to 765,000 years ago. Some of these early humans spread to Eurasia, where they split into Neanderthals in Europe and Denisovians in Asia. Swindarian is also published in English literature. 
Spiderian or Swindarian. It is the name of the Upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic culture complex centered in the area of modern Poland. Homo uh, Heldeberg Genesis Heldeberg man is an extinct, potentially distinct species of the genus Homo and may be a distinct ancestor to the Homo neanderthalus in Europe. According to the recent Outer Africa theory, uh, similar to the Homo Arctic Homo sapiens found in Africa, i.e. Homo Rhodesians and Homo sapiens adult, existed in Africa as part of the operation of the saffron pump and not European forms of Homo elderberg. Oh gosh, can't even say these. Sorry, I'm messing it up. I thought to be direct ancestors of modern Homo sapiens. Homo ancestor is likely a direct ancestor living 750,000 years ago involving into Homo. This guy appearing in fossil records roughly. I, I don't believe these dates. I really don't. I'm sorry, but nah. Um, so the, the remains were found in Muller near Hildenburg, Germany and then later in Agro, France and Polarica, Greece. Best evidence found for these hominids date between 400,000 and 500,000 years ago. Hello, there's a stone. Tool technology was considerably close to the Archon's tools used by Homo erectus. Most current experts believe Rohesian man found in Africa to be within the group of Homo Hildebergenus. This would make Africans Hildebergenus the ancestor of humans, while European variety would be the ancestor of the Neanderthals. I'm so saying, sorry for saying this wrong, I really am. Screwing it up. From archaeological finds, the Denisovian appears to be a giant size with. Wow, giants are the Denisovians. Okay, so Denisovians are the giants. With red or blonde hair and were known for keeping their secrets. This was not some genetic mutation such as giantism, but a distinct race of giant hominoids. Teeth, archaeologists claim, are belonging to the Denisovians are twice the size of current Homo sapiens. This suggests that the Denisovians are also descended from the Watchers, but also hybrids, but not from the Anderthal race, prominent in northern western hemispheres, but from these people were found mainly in eastern and southern races known as the Serpent People, the Nagas in India and the Quatskoli in Americas, and like Swedearians, held a tribute to forward to the Nephilim as the men of renown, at least the elite level. This suggests that they were expectantly exponentially advanced race that disbanded upon the southern hemisphere as the ice sheets took hold and expanded south. That they began to breed with the southern hominoids but remained the elect of those they subdued. The watchers appeared to be connected to the empire that built the steppe pyramids found across the globe, suggesting it is the watchers that have hidden behind various races throughout the history of Earth and the inhabitants as hidden royalty. From that period would be born at Atlantis and Lemur, the latter destroyed by the Atlanteans, with the former activating the deluge due to the mass use, misuse of technology. From the Essenes of Kulman, we can follow the priesthood, both pre- and post-flood study. The Blagodeki Temple is claimed by author Andrew Collins, a Stonehenge-type monument to be a temple of the Watchers. Founder in Ur of Chandelins, the birthplace of Abram, it appears to be the center of all things hybrid creatures, the product of which become the historical men of renown. Abram being no exception for that rule. Collins suggests that the area to be, oh, Collins suggests that, suggests the area to be the Garden of Eden and the birthplace of Adam, which would further support the idea of Ur being the place of race breeding. The alternative site for Ur is Iraq. The academic edemic race, sorry, the edemic race, therefore, is a result of a breeding program that was doomed due to Eve acting upon the advice offered by the Sobek, the serpent. Both Adam and Eve, as race, had fallen to trace ups of less and attach the fallen cult into today. Look here, okay. I digress. When I apply myself to spiritual doctrine, I utilize three methods. First, I read the text 
and pen the intermediate comprehension out of its second, I read it again with the true definitions of the words used and penned. Those results also. The third is to apply context as a mechanic operational to my life as it would be in reality, or how I would react to the instigation of to the action of the cautionary tale myself. This process brings to the fore a serious quandary as to relates to whom Abram soul served, especially when you apply the gospel narrative to the tempting of Christ's story of Abram. The format I applied went thus. When I sat me meandering through the mind when a voice entered my space, claimed itself to be God, and suggested I kill my son, my immediate and instant reaction was, F off, you dynamic twat. Can you feel that instinct response to the experiment yourself as it pertains to applying what is before you as a text to your present reality and not being encouraged to operate from an ordained program of how to comprehend the context of the event? Therefore, it has always subdued me. Uh, therefore, it has always disturbed me when great things are spoken of Abram for I do wonder which God he actually served from the moment he determined to kill his own flesh and blood, that Yesh Yeshua was the return to be the righteous God who required his own blood sacrifice to free humanity from the penalty of sin, especially the Hebrews first, in the grip of Sobek, which I would suggest is the dark sun God, so exposed by many secret societies, especially during the 1700s, to have invaded and subverted many orders so uh, we're getting these dates you know like Allen and, and everyone's talking about we're getting these we're getting there the real symbolism of Akhenaten's Aten could be the rebirth of Sobek into the Egyptian life but I have yet to research this topic and it's pure conjecture on my part everything about spiritual doc doctrine presents itself in twin form one is adapt to finding in spring Poet poise and verse that compels to change itself to the better, just as one is adapt to find fire and brimstone judgment or war. The scriptures seek a duality because there is a duality in men. For each man there is a reason to argument to support these dualities. Be you a expression of darker light, each set of twin pillars shall procure you for you a God to hold the position in between the two pillars to serve your chosen path on your journey to life. And of course, you are the God in the flesh as the rider of the chariot. You are the representation and the image of the God you've chosen. You choose to offer your efforts. The choice will determine your interrelations with others and the world as it is determined the kind of characters you attract. More on symbolism later. Okay. The Native Americans have great symbology to describe the twin aspects of the physical existence and how it plays out from the unseen. We have each have a wolf to the left and a wolf to the right. To the right we have rep a character representing love, respect, honour and a sense of mor morality to offer you experience. To the left a character that harbours hate, jealousy, blame and that it, its will has the right to might which forces over others using fear as a weapon. Man is a battleground. It is with each and every one of us, no matter the genetic makeup, that the choice is being made as to which energy we bring to the physical world to find by which wolf we feed. And that's, you know, the yin and yang, and it's, it's your karma, it's your duality, it's the black and white of the Freemasons. Following the trail, during the 1700s, the Church of Rome broke from the Masonic builders and only all commissions giving them to build churches, cathedrals. The church then moved against Freemasonry. Pope Leo had this to say, The purpose and the aim of the Masonic sect, having discovered from plain evidence, is easy to understand, to try and relieve after 18 centuries. The manners and institutions of paganism, we intend to turn our attention to the Masonic society to illustrate more and more this wicked force and to stop the spread of this contagious disease, Victor Hugo, in his book, The Hunched Back of Notre Dame, in 1829, had this to say, From the remotest antiquity, the human race has employed architecture as its chief means of writing. Sometimes an entrance, a front, or even an entire church presents this symbolic meaning, as 
wholly foreign to religion or even hostile to the church, only in this shit can despite, decipher these mysterious books. It's not only the books, it's the buildings themselves. Um, I'll try and make a video on that one for you. In media, medieval Europe, fragments of the secret doctrine transmitted the sim in symbols and secrets of the cathedral builders determine much of the Gothic architecture. Yeah. Michael Howard, in his book The Occult Conspiracy, 1989, said, There's generally belief in occult circles that these medieval masons had inherited stoic knowledge from their pagan attendants, and that this knowledge was incorporated into the sacred architecture of the cathedrals. Yes, that's true. So we've got Babylonian, Hindu, Mayan. Yep. The above image presents the trinity in two pillars, left and right, each side of a commanding deity. Each religion will call its grandeur of dominion, God. In the case of Christianity, we have the trinity presented as Jesus and Mary, either side of the Father. Symbolism is exactly the same as most other religious deities. The idea that only Christianity would hold the trinity is sa sacred is absolutely residuary, and we know from what that comes from. But of course, it is the meaning of uh, that. Sorry, but of course, it is the meaning as to what the Trinity is being symbolized, and at any given time, that is the secret to be determined from the architect in question. When the Church realizes the Masonic deception built into the cathedrals, it was too late to change the buildings, so they ensured they built no more in the Church. Whether this plan panned out as a reality or was just another framed acknowledgement for the facts as the telegraph, so the secret deities could be worshipped without acknowledgement or opposition of the flock is open to debate. Now, I would say the latter on that one. I really would. You know, like at the start of the story, they give you a little bit. I presented another paper on just this subject, which from the title alone caused controversy among the faithful. But these are Issues we need to address if we find a remedy to the current position of the church as an institution fast becoming entangled in the Noah child platform. Yes, it is. See? And if you don't know what the Noah child laws are, look, check out some of my other videos I've made. I've, I've made a few videos about the Noah child, and it's coming. If you know the above image, you can see the Tibet syndrome. Yet in architecture of the cathedrals, the center deity is lower than the both p pillars. This symbolizes the jackants and boas as above God worships inside the building. You can see another format in the entrance of the step pyramids below and above, and yet only in the Americas present the three at the same height. Africa and Asia show the center deity above pillars. Is it a coincidence that the pyramids in the Americas were rife with blood sacrifice? So there you go. There's a little difference. So different countries, different tribes, they put them at different on the step pyramids below and above, and only in the Americas three at the same height. Yeah, it's so interesting. Very interesting. So yeah, these are all just, they look so alike. And, and some say that this is supposed to be, um, like being birthed of a woman walking, you know, going into the birth canal. Uh, I have another image I'll share. I'll download it as the thumbnail so you can see it. And I'll also post it to my community tabs where it, ha it, it shows you frequencies. A clever trick indeed has been played out above on all cathedrals. The entrance follow the expected symmetry as it relates to the hierarchy which has one miss the overall front end architecture and the real symbolism in the building billeting of the Christian Trinity, showing the huge twin front pillar front hierarchy. The Middle Ages saw new Christianity emerge for the powerful Christianity that placed Ursary at the top of the tree. I would cite this architecture to be the symbolism showing the before 
the 10th century, the money lenders had full control over the Holy See. Or was it that it was a thousand years with Christ and they could do what they needed? The tier of control that could master the deception with the without the church itself realizing the absurdity of the architecture. When they did see a rea the reality during the 1700s, the hierarchy had to recognize the deception publicly to satisfy the flock and priesthood that the remedy had to be activated. Yet still, these buildings continue to hold power over the European kingdoms of Christian. Hmm. When looking for remedy in today's all-out debarkment of spiritual doctrine, we must be ever watchful that we do not try to raise again to the top of the pyramid institutions that have failed in the upkeep of the doctrine on which they were built. To fail in this re re regard would be to offer yourselves up to the enemy, the antagonist of belief. Something of a serpentine nature has overcome religions, and this has them hooked-winked and pulled by the weapons at the neck into the darkness. Don't let this be you. I will end this paper with the words of Walter Wilsham in his book, The Meaning of Masonry, 1922. The twin pillars, Jacqueline and Boaz, have been incorporated into the Christian ar architecture. If you ever, if you recall the construction of York Minster and West Absmith, Westminster Abbey, you'll recognize the pillars in the two great towers flanking them, the main entrance. So that's that one. Yeah, really interesting. I'll leave what I was talking about on this in the um, thumbnail and um, in my community tabs. So um, the, the other video I was making was about the 10 tribes and I've got heaps of other videos on my mobile I'm currently uploading to edit. It's taken a while to upload them. Got to transfer him from the mobile to the laptop and edit, but we're getting there. So, wherever you are in the world, if you're still with me here, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all the prayers for my son. We're getting there. That's why I've been so quiet, just focusing on him. So, thank you very much. Um, just raise your vibrations. And yeah, if you haven't got something nice to say, just don't say it. You know, don't add fuel to the fire. Much love. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.